Hi guys, in this video we're going to learn about how to create live search with React. So there would be time wherein you will need to make an application for your client or for your own project where you will need to search uh, live results. So for example, if user types over here, let's say picture, you can see that I'm getting live results, right? So this is what we need to create and then as the user types in, you can see that you also have the loader that is being shown over here and then we also have the next uh, and priv available. So these buttons are available to navigate through different pages because if the data is large, if we have huge number of data, it would not be appropriate to show them uh, all in one go which would actually make the query slow if we have so much of data. So let's say we show only 20 results and then we show the next 20 results on the next page when the user clicks on next button and the following next uh, page will be shown when the user clicks on that and user can navigate between prev and next uh, pages. Okay, great. So how do you do that? Uh, for this example, I'm going to be using Pixabay API. So they have provided a search API as you can see. Okay, and they give you different parameters. You need to of course sign up uh, and get your own API key so you can come over here and you can sign up. I'm already logged in. Okay, and then give you they give you different parameters like you can see Q for query. You have the ID and all of that information available. So if I had to take an example, I can go on this and just search a query and you can see that we have the data available in JSON format so you have the total number of hits then let me just minimize you so all of the data available you have the image URL uh, all of this information so you can use that you also have the total amount of results that are available so as you can see it's very high of course we don't want that much of data and you can see that it's going to show you only 20 items per request okay uh, so the total is going to be large so we can use pagination for the same uh, no matter how m you know how many requests you make by default it gives you an option to get 20 results okay I've also written a blog on this so if some of you guys are interested in following the blog you can follow this along with the video so it's easy for you to do a copy paste of the code rather than having to type it yourself to save time so you can go to codetech.com and, and this link I will be putting that in the description box and you can check that from there Okay, so let's begin coding then. Uh, there is a Git repository already available called React Workshop and you just need to scroll down and go to the one that says the branch which is live search react. So you can clone this branch, you can clone this one and then you can check out this on live search react branch. So this branch has all of the codes available for this one. Okay. So I've already got everything set up. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to develop this from scratch okay if you want to follow along and start from scratch you can clone one of the branches sorry you can clone this repository and go to one of the branches which is react app webpack and then just start uh, you know developing along with me okay so I've already got that uh, I've already checked out to that branch and I'm, I'm running npm run dev to start the server so let me just show that to you so you can see I'm on that branch right now and I can just run npm run dev. I'm going to use webpack dev server. You can see that the server is started. Okay. And it started on this URL. Go over here. You can see that you've already got this app component information being displayed. So we are starting from scratch. Okay. So I've got the project set up. I've got my app.js inside of source uh, directory. Okay. And this is my main component. So what we're going to do is we will start by making components directory and we will create a file called search.js okay and what we're going to do is we will do an import react from react just zoom in and then we will create a class component called search that will extend reacts component and we'll have a render method and then we'll just return something over here for now I'll just, just return div okay and then I would just need to export this so I'll say export default search 
and then I'm just going to import that into my main component which is app.js so it's available to me and you can see that PHP Storm has already imported this component over here on top okay so I've got that running okay if I just check this is search component you can see I've got this being displayed over here okay now the first thing we need to do is we need to initialize some of the information in state because we're going to be needing uh, those information so inside of my constructor method which will accept props okay I will call super and then props so that props are available inside constructor and then I'm going to define state we are going to be needing some of the properties. The first thing we will need is query, where we will store uh, users query results. Sorry, query users query information. Then we will need uh, a property called results, where we will store the result that we receive from the uh, API. Okay, uh, the Pixabay API. Okay, and then we will need a property called loading because we want to show loading while the uh, query is being fetched, the, the, the data is being fetched, okay, and then we will need one for message because we want to show some message in case if we get some error or if there are no further data is available, uh, if there are no further data available, that's when we'll need message, okay, so we've got that. Inside of the render method, uh, we'll give it a class name of container, container, okay, and then let's create heading we will give it a heading of uh, heading with a class name of heading okay and then we'll say live search react application that's our heading and then we're going to need, need a search input so we'll say search input and over here we will wrap our input inside of a label and then we'll give it a class name so that we can style it later on class name of search label and then we will give we'll make it as HTML4 and that will be search input okay inside of this we'll have our input tag okay I'm going to break all of this into multiple lines because we're going to be putting a lot of information over here so type is equal to text value for now we can put it as empty later on we'll put that to uh, sorry the um, states query value okay so that's that there is no comma okay now ID will be the same as what we put for HTML4 so it's going to be search input okay and then we'll have placeholder and let's name it as search okay let's see how it's looking for now of course uh, it's available but doesn't look that great don't worry we'll style it in a moment and then we will need a uh, an icon also for search so for that we will go ahead and get the font awesome okay um, so what I'm going to do is go to font awesome 5.8 CDN okay just copy this go to my public index HTML okay and then just in include that over here I think already got that included so I don't need to include it actually okay so but uh, you can do that I'm currently using 4.7 you can go for whichever version you want okay so for 4.7 uh, we would need to include the search icon so if you go to font I awesome 4.7 icons you can get a search icon so I can click on okay it's here search so search here it is okay so I've got this available I can take this for my search icon so it looks good 
okay and since it doesn't have anything inside of it I can give it a closing tag like so okay and we've already imported this so that's brilliant okay let's just style it a bit so what I'm going to do is I'll create a style sheet I'll call it search dot CSS and I'll write some styles so the first thing we have is the heading so let's style our heading we'll give it a font size of let's say 30 pixels I want it to look b uh, big it's a it's a heading so a padding let's make it 16 pixels top and bottom and 0 for left and right color let's say I want to give it 444 four, four. okay and then text align center so it comes in center okay let's see how that looks gonna close okay it looks that we're gonna close all of this we don't need it okay great uh, of course I have not imported that that's why you're not seeing anything over here so let me just quickly import that into our search.js so I'll do an import and it's outside one directory as you can see outside of, it is outside of component we are currently in, inside of component so this search.cs is outside of the component that's why double dots to get out of the directory and then I can just do search.css is included and now you can see it's been styled okay next thing we want to do is we want to style okay I'm gonna close app.js okay I'm going to style my container as well so let's put that on top okay and for container we'll say margin 36 pixels auto and width let's say 100 percent okay and then max width 800 pixels okay so how that looks okay great so it's in the center okay great and then the next thing we'll do is we'll style a search label so we have our search label let's style that as well okay and we'll make it position relative and then we have our container in sorry we have our input which is this so I'll say container because it's inside of container then input and then we'll say width will be 100% because currently it's not 100% and it's looking pretty small you can see now it's 100% okay and of course uh, then padding this looks pretty small so 16 pixels of padding let's give it a font size of let's say 36 pixels I want it to be big uh, font style font style italic and color let's say this one box sizing border box and outline will be none okay and so that's what we have that looks good right now I want you to position the search icon as well so the search icon uh, all I need to give it a class okay so I'll give it search icon and let's style that as one that that one as well okay so position absolute because it needs to have an absolute position in relation to the search label in relation to its container which is label okay and then let's make it okay I need a top over here now so let's put a top say minus 10 pixels let's see how that looks okay it's somewhere in the center that's fine font size I need to make it a little large 24 yeah looks good and then color let's give it a color of 555 five, five. Yeah, better and I need to give it a right position so it comes inside right let's give it 18 pixels yep it's inside now great so we've got a search input uh, styled okay and we've already imported our style sheet that's brilliant 
Now what we need to do is we need to create a function that handles an event when user types something over here. So what we're going to do is we'll come back to our search.js okay and uh, over here we will create a method and we'll call it handle on input change it'll, it'll be then the event will be available inside of this okay and we will go ahead and put an event on this input so we'll say on change and then we'll just call this function this dot on input sorry handle on input change okay we'll call this function whenever the user types something over here great and uh, we'll store the query inside of a constant called query and the query will be available inside event dot target dot value okay and then we're just going to set the state so let's say what we're getting in query now I'm going to do an inspect element I can go to console and just type something sure enough you can see you're getting that now we need to set that to the state so we'll say this dot set state we'll say query uh, we'll set query to query so you can also write in uh, ES6 if the property name property value is the same you can just write it like this query We'll set query so let's see what we get in the query i'll go to my react uh, chrome extension tool react chrome developer tool and i'll just type uh, search component i need to search search component and see what we get in the query so if i type something over here like hello so you, you see you're getting that And what we also need to do is we need to give it a name that's why it's not able to pick it up properly so we'll give it a name as query now if we type and go ahead and search for search now type something hello okay What we also need to do is just pull query from the state over here using object destructuring. So I can say query in curly braces and say this dot state and this is equivalent to uh, query is equal to this dot state dot query. It's the same thing. Okay. But in ES6 we use object destructuring which means pulling this query variable out of the state and storing it inside of, uh, of this constant. So uh, now in the value we can pass just this query okay and now if I check hello if I just need to console log over here the state basically this dot state let's console log that let's see what we get so say hello you can see now we're getting hello over here okay great awesome so what's happening is that uh, when the user types something this function is called and whatever the user types that is being appended to the query okay so we are getting whatever the user types over here in the query and that's what the value of the query will be uh, so the value of the input will be as well okay great awesome what we also need to do is we need to set the loading to true at this point because uh, later on when we call the api initially we need to set the loading to true so we can show the loader okay and what we also need to do is set the message value to empty so in case if there was any message set prior that's going to set to empty uh, when the user types something okay we'll understand this a bit later but we will need that so mention that okay great awesome now the next thing is uh, we need to install axios to make our query request so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this first and do an npm install axios <clears throat> while it gets installed I just need to import it over here so I can say import axios from axios okay you can use fetch also but uh, I, I use axios because it gives you the data in the JSON format already you don't have to use uh, you know uh, functions to convert it into JSON format okay so I've got that installed I'll just uh, go ahead and run the server back again okay so that's done now let's create a function uh, called fetch search results 
and the job of that function will be to go ahead and fetch the query results so I'll make a function called fetch search results and it'll be an arrow function and it's going to take a parameter called updated page number so initially that page number will be one but when we create pagination which will probably be in the next video then we will you know change the page number so for example he is on the page uh, current page is one uh, then if he clicks on the next button then we'll pass the page number two so that this function result gives the result of the page number two okay and it will also take the query of whatever the user has entered and then we will go ahead and create a search URL okay and uh, so I'm just gonna get the search URL I already copied that somewhere right uh, yeah we've got that here so I'm just gonna copy that so you don't have to use my API you can get your API as well okay so let's put that in backtick because we need to put the information dynamically so we'll put it that in backtick so it was going to need the query so q is equal to query so i'm going to pass query over here so if you go to their page which is basically or is it this one <coughs> you can see q needs the query okay q means query <coughs> Now it needs a page number also, so rather than putting like this, we can put make that dynamic. So over here we can say const page number is equal to and then we can check if you've got any value in the updated page number. So currently we can set the set this to empty. Okay. If we have any value, then let's put the page number dynamically. So we're gonna use backtick again and just take this page from here and paste it here and then pass in our updated page number here okay and if then if it doesn't have any value if it's empty then we'll just keep this empty okay so if the user doesn't pass uh, sorry if we don't pass any up, uh, page number then it's just going to get the query result without the page number okay brilliant <coughs> now what we're going to do is um, we're going to use axios to make a, a request to get the data whenever the user enters something but that wouldn't be really healthy because each time user type something in the input box and if you're making a query every time if you're stopping really fast then obviously it won't be good for performance uh, so maybe let's say he wants to type a picture okay so he's type p then i then c which means on every uh, letter he types every character he types you're making that many queries we probably want to make a query after he's typed everything so what we can do is we can go ahead and cancel uh, the previous request before making a new one when he's actually typing so axios actually provides us with the cancel token okay uh, so if you go to git for axios and you search cancel token you can see this is how you go ahead and create a cancel token and cancel the previous request so you've got axios or cancel token all of that information available so you can check that out I will just you know, demonstrate uh, demonstrate this quickly the first thing we need to do is we need to create uh, a variable called cancel and set this value to empty and the best place to do that is inside of a constructor method okay and the next thing we're going to do is inside of a fetch results we are going to check if this dot cancel has any value okay if it has then go ahead and cancel the previous request so we can use this dot cancel dot cancel we have a function available okay to cancel the request and if it is not then we will create a new token and store it inside of the axios uh, cancel token cancel token dot source is that it cancel token source yes so that's how we create a token so 
we go ahead and create a token and before making a request we first check if the token was already available then we cancel that previous request before making a new one and each time a request comes we check that information we cancel previous one and create a new token okay and then we have the axios available so we can say axios dot get so we'll make a get request we already have a URL available here so I'm going to use that okay and I think we have not put the page number here so let me just put the page number quickly <coughs> okay now it takes the next parameter uh, where you can pass in this cancel token so you can say cancel token as you can see it's, you can pass this okay so cancel token and I already have that stored inside of the cancel so cancel dot token okay so this will give me the token okay and I'll pass that in the configuration then uh, when we get the response so I'll say dot then okay and inside of the response I will have a res so I'll, a res will contain the response okay and over here uh, we can also create a constant for storing the information that we want to show to the user in case if the result was not found so we can say result not found message is equal to now before even we go to that I think we should see what are we getting in the data first okay so we'll do res right dot data or let me just show you what we get in res first okay so let's have a look uh, what we want to do is we want to call this function uh, in order for us to be able to see that okay so we where, 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 where do we call this function we can call this function here but that wouldn't be appropriate why because we haven't set our loading to true yet we haven't uh, set our query or the message itself but you will say Imran I've already done a set state over here so why can't I just do fetch result at the just beneath that well the reason for this the answer for this is that set state is asynchronous and it doesn't guarantee us that this query will be set to this value this loading will be set to this value and the message will be the following value uh, immediately as soon as you call this function this could take time and uh, react for performance can also batch multiple set states together so for this reason uh, react provides us a callback function so if you want to be sure that you want to call a function only uh, you know after you've set all of this information in the state you can put all of the information in the callback okay so if you want to have any action to take place after it's set you go ahead and do that in callback function so I have gone ahead and passed a function inside of this as a second parameter and that's your callback function and we are going to call this fetch results over here what it does is it takes two parameters when it's updated page number a second is query so I can go ahead and put one so page number one because it's initial request just for page number one and then second is the query so I can just pass query over here okay I know I can uh, you know use this dot state this dot state dot query also because we are setting query over here but we already have query available here so why don't we just use that okay great now when you make this request we'll get the data let's try to see if it works great let's see picture do we have anything uh, okay we have not handled the error so let's handle the error also so inside of the catch we will handle the error so we can say error okay and inside of that so we can check axios dot is cancel and then it takes error so in case if there's an error from axios in cancelling request or if there is any other error we'll check that okay and then we're gonna set state to that particular error so we'll say first we'll set loading to false because if we are inside of the catch method that means the request is already complete and we've got some error so we'll set loading to false and over here we'll say message and we'll pass in the message that failed to fetch the data please check network for to our client we don't want to show any you know unusual message we'll just keep the message constant if we get any errors and at development 
environment we will actually find out if we, if we have an error by consoling log the error okay